There you go, using my phone, James Green, short series shenanigans. All right, so, little project here I've been wanting to do on my little lathe for a while. Well, not a while, but around here. All right, Grizzly G0776. So, you guys know, a couple years ago, uh, because the design on this hold down, the way it's set up here, uh, that only kind of went part way through and the casting busted and I, I know there's videos on my channel about it anyway um, And I modified it and put this longer handle and redid and redid this whole deal um, And then I brought it across here uh, So it, because the, the the other one was just it was a crappy design. They only brought the bar uh, For the cam lock it, it didn't it barely cut part of the cast anyway so the part that goes in here Oh look, a new one, is this, okay? Um, yeah, it's an import lathe. This lathe has paid for itself probably 50 times over. So this piece here, as you can see, when you go to use bigger bits, uh, it's soft, okay? This is, has the little, you know, the lock here, if, if you will, or the, I, I put that in there. That's the little, you know, keyway that keeps this whole thing from turning. Well, when you'd use bigger bits or whatever, you can see it would swage this edge over and it would stand up. So, I'm not too concerned about having graduations on a tailstock. Honestly, um, I see guys mod things and put calipers and stuff back here. Really? Why? Uh, you don't need it. 99.9999999999% of the time, you don't need it. It's got a DRO if you're going to do some sort of drilling or boring. Um, you got a DRO built right there. But I see guys, you know, even if you don't, I mean, it's a waste. So I'm not too concerned about having imperial and metric graduations on a tailstock. That's kind of like trying to move sand with a pitchfork. Anyway, so you got that little piece on the back. And uh, inside here where it locks in the tapers lock in on your let me find a that part where it locks in at the back um it tore up not a real big deal it's soft material my main thing is uh repeated use and how that locks you can see over time how it has just it would swage and raise. I'd have to pull it apart, and because uh, it would make the tailstock very, very difficult, if not al almost impossible, to turn. So, got some 1045, and uh, <laughs> made me one. Now it's it's not, but I just wanted to show something here. I've got this in here because this is like a Morse taper three to Morse taper one extension adapter, but. Yeah, let me <laughs> drilled and tap those, bored it for that little brass piece. Uh, slowly snuck up on it. Basically, it's 32 mil, but you can you can see how I'm trying to do this one-handed. It's yeah, you can hear that coming in and out but anyway I and I purposely made yes I made this sucker longer because a lot of times I'm doing things uh, I just use the piece of material I have let me set it out here where you guys can see sorry trying to do this one-handed don't want anything to fall so the original length one versus the one I made because I'm always having to you know scoot the tail stock up and there's times I'm doing things so it's a couple inches longer here um, let me get a ruler let's walk over here let me, so yeah walk around here in the garage got the garage doors open let's grab a hook scale ruler good old stare at hook scale ruler here 
This is an 18-inch hook scale. So the original one, which it's all metric, is uh, about 7 inches. This one is 10, so I'll hammer around now. You can see the original one, about 7 inches, okay? This one, 10. So all I have left to do is uh, I'm going to set this up, and like I said, this is just an adapter. Uh, I did cut the Morse taper in there, so if you go to your machine manual or you can pull up on the internet, the taper is about one and a half degree-ish. You can pull it up, do a Google image search, because everyone always asks, you know, about different things. Everything you ever want to know but was afraid to ask, you can find in the machinist manual, or if you don't have a manual, pull it up on Google image search, and it'll give you the dimensions on there. And you can set that according to what I did was with my setup here. I did about uh, about a degree and a half ish, almost, and then I just worked back and forth with the compound, um, going in, boring it out. Matter of fact, that's what I use. I didn't want to do a whole big thing. I'm trying to get a lot of things going right now, and I just don't have time for. The video camera but the phone i mean technology i may build me a stand and start doing videos with my phone like i did this one for hey might as well friday night here you know what is it the 23rd whatever of 2020 so all i have left to do on this flip back around there uh and like i said this is just an adapter that i have and i'm holding it on the inside and then of course you know i put this in and was holding against here and it's a through bore so to kind of walk you through what I did is I actually took and I have some really long bits here. This is like a 17 and a half millimeter. Yeah, pull it out or 16 or whatever it is here. Let's see. Z15. Yeah, 17 and a half millimeter. Um, that way I wouldn't get too big, real long bit. And I was able to drill through all this through hole, came in. Uh, cut my taper, test fitted it, and then I just used this kind of like, you know, so you're turning between centers and slowly had to turn down. I believe that material was one and three eighths or whatever. I had some 1045. So all I got left to do, so what I am going to do, I got thinking about this. Instead of doing a flat bottom where you end up with, sorry, uh, where you end up with an angle in there and a chance because there are times I've run some bits in here that are you know like I've been running that inch and a quarter bit on some things so what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna remake this this is a when I redid whoop, when I redid this this is just like a grade five let me pull this out here because I'm gonna make another one of these again this lathe was made in hold on let me pull this out here uh, okay so what came in there was just a cap screw real cheap you know or set screw crappy this is what I made as I took a uh, grade 5 whatever you want to call that bolt and I just did that and threw it and it worked great um, what I am going to do so this lathe was actually made in February 2015 there's a build date on it so what I'm going to do instead uh, because as you can see I'm trying to hold this here you can see it would press against that and just swage that edge over all the torque from the bit and it was it would swell it up and you couldn't hardly move this thing it was a real pain so harder material whatever you know that is and like I said it's worked great. I just, you know, all this time, and I just got tired of, eh, you know. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to unbolt that and transfer it to here, which I've already, you know, started one drill. There was one when I was starting, and I didn't like how it was trying to come to the inside. So I rotated it a little bit and then started again. Not a big deal. Counterboard that fits in there. And, uh... That is the item that sits inside. So all I've got left to do is cut this, but instead of doing flat bottom, 
what I'm going to do is come in with a ball end mill. So that way it's, I mean, that's the idea. I'm going to try that at first. That way there's not an angle and less likely to swage up. And when I go to make another bolt, because I'm not going to use this one, I'm going to get, a, I've got some grade eights over here. Uh, I'm going to round the end of it. So that way it fits smooth, if you will. You know, you're gonna, it's going to be smooth and rounded, and it's less likely to try to push and swage the material up. Not to mention, 1045, uh, I can heat treat it. And so I will, I'm going to, before I go doing that, because then that changes dimensions on stuff, and it's tight, which I already know, this material right now is harder than the old one. Um, but yeah, slid that in here. And just, yeah, I just got through polishing it up, and man, just, you can hear. You can hear it just air. That's just, you don't want it too tight, but you can see it's definitely got a good seal. Of course, you got your oilers and stuff. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I am going to keep this piece just in case something goes wrong um you know that's aluminum nickel bronze but yeah so if your tailstock is getting on any of these on any lathe you know especially the import ones because we all know they're not the best in the world but you know what everyone says oh you need a this brand or that brand and import stuff is junk well, i'll tell you what this lathe i think when i got it i paid $5,800 or whatever, I, I've made that a hundred times over off this machine. So, uh, the small little things that's happened, you know, when that crappy design, when that broke, and then this, literally, that's it. When I first got it, I moved, I've talked about, you know, I moved my coolant back, uh, and I just recently put a new light on because the light that was on here uh, was uh, halogen. And the wires, it twi well, it's gone. I threw it away. There was a connector that came up underneath and back and forth, back, and it twisted. It got hot and it just shorted out. Now I've got a nice, you know, $37 LED, which I think they come with LED now. Yes, this one's explosion proof. Um, but I've, I don't have it wired in right now uh, because I'm trying to get some other stuff done. Right now it's just plugged in an extension cord. Uh, I am going to redo because how it goes now is they have it go down and into the oil pan. Every time you go to pull the oil pan or the chip pan in or out, whether, you know, because I'm going to put this in some armor armor uh, cable, uh, which armor cable is, you've seen that stuff that's kind of like this. That's what armor cable is basically. But uh, I'm going to put this in something and feed it through. Uh, but for right now, it's over here out of the way. This, this is kind of temporary. But, uh, so yeah, I've put a six jaw chuck on here that I traded for a while back. And I love the, I love the six jaw. Yes, it is a bison. Pull that off. But yeah, loving the six jaw. Um, love it, love it, love it. Tight as, tight as I'll get out. I've also got the three jaw that came with it, the four jaw, the plate. And a 5C. I've got a 5C head if I need to put on here to uh, run 5C collets or whatever. But uh, so yeah, I just figured I'd kind of do a quick video here. Throw this up on the YouTube channel. But yeah, I'm not concerned about having, you know, some guys are all about, I'm all about keeping it, pardon me, cold out here. Um, some guys are all about, oh, you have to have a DRO on every, like, really guys? And some guys like to do that. That's fine. But I like to keep it simple. I'm sitting here thinking, other than just a general, I mean, if I want to put some marks, I might put like one, two, three, four, five inch for what I've done a lot of stuff. Even my gunsmithing, everyone's like, oh, you have to have that on there to run your reamer in the right depth. Yeah, I guess you could, you know, um, I haven't had to use it because when I go to do gun barrels or stuff on here and I run the chambering reamers in, um, they're actually set and marked and you mark your depth on your chambering reamer roughing and finishing to go in there and do. To me, honestly, having those numbers on the back is just, I don't know. 
Is it backwards or forward? There we go. Sometimes cameras will, yeah, cameras showing it backwards because I'm in it, but that's eye candy. You really don't need, you know, for what I do. And if you're doing stuff where you really, really, really need a measurement on your tail stock and you have a really, really inexpensive lathe, then something's wrong. I don't know. It's just my opinion. You know, some people might get butthurt over it. Oh, well. Um, and it's not that big of a deal to set something up. I mean, I've done some basic, uh, you know, put a little mark if you want to, so you know how much further to go. You can do that. I've done that on other lays before, or places I've worked at, um, even the old one Dad had. Those numbers were worn out because it had been, you know, used so much. Uh, but what you can do is go in there and put you some mark. Let me flip. Because what I have done before... So if you don't have one, or it is worn out, or you have an old lathe, or it doesn't have it, what you can actually do, get you a marker. And you can actually, if you want to, you don't have to put a DR. Everyone's like, oh, spend whatever, put like a, oh, where's my little marker? I'm trying to get my little deal out here. Come on. Digging it out. Okay. So what you can do, and I've done it before. Or my other little magnet at. Let me go grab my magnet. And a lot of this is a quick, simple. Okay. If you're really, really curious about how far you need to go, you take your, you know, let's say, boom, there. All right. Or we'll pull it back a little bit. You know, however, need you. There you go. You get you a big magnet. You get you a scale ruler, okay, and or you can put it on here, however, just temporary. That way it's out of the way. And you can say that that's, that's your zero, for example, well, this ain't hooked up yet. Say, that, say that's your zero, okay, so that would be the end. And you can come up here and say, hey, I want to go out one inch. So you come over here, I'm trying to do this through the camera, you just put one inch mark. Of course, that thing's not hooked up on the back. And then you just turn your tailstock to where it comes out one inch. Wow, how simple is that? You don't have to worry about, you know, mounting a DRO. Or I've seen guys take calipers and mount on the back. And you burn up half the, you know, caliper and the batteries. You don't need that garbage. If you're doing something to where you, oh, I got it down to the thousandth. With a tailstock, mm, you need to go up to your compound and stuff like that a bit. If you're trying to do precise stuff that on a cheap import lathe, then something's wrong. If it's that super critical, um, it should be done in an, another way. You know, uh, there's too much play and stuff like that. Use your compound. You know, you got your DRO or you got your dials here. They're already built in. Just there's more than one way to do things. That's why I wanted to show you guys that. So I know people are going to be like, oh, you need to put those measurements on the back. No, you don't. You know, you just the way I showed you right there. So I used to work um, there. It was so the tail stock was so it was an Andrew Chow lay uh, that place I used to work. It was so wore out when I did need to measure. I would just grab. Matter of fact, I would grab this magnet and a steel rule, throw it up there and I would pick a spot. You know, you can make two marks. You can call that your, you know, let's say you could call that your the end of your ruler. And I need to go two inches. You come down here. Trying to do this through the camera. And you just make a mark. And that's just general. You know, general purpose. How far do you go in? Okay, boom. There you go. Or, or, another way. I'll use it. Grab this. Or, another thing is, a lot of people don't know. You take your drill bit. Okay? Put it up near the tip of your stock to where it's touching. Okay? Come back and measure on your uh, drill bit. How far you need to go in. Make a black mark with it. And then once it's in that far, oh, sorry, once it's in that far, you stop. Simple. There you go. So, I know it's been a while since I've put stuff up on my channel. Busy doing things. Put that over there. And I just might use the phone. Build, I've got to dig up my little holder that I built for phones. And might use the phone instead to shoot videos instead of the camera. So, there we go. Ta-da! Yes, everyone's wanting to know. Yes, I've been doing lots of work in here, and 
yes, it's not clean. Yes, it's dirty. But uh, it's just me. So there you go. So I hope you guys are enjoying what's going on out there with uh, machining and stuff lately in the community. I know I've been pretty idle the last couple of years, but life's busy. Like I said, had a heart attack back almost a year ago now. So yours truly has a stint now. And so I've really had to take a step back. And man, I tell you what, having a heart attack ain't fun on top of everything else. So there you go. Anyway, so hope that helps. I hope you guys enjoy it. And like I said, this uh, this uh, phone that I have now, I just updated to, pretty cool compared to, it's light years ahead of my Canon camera that I use. And uh, I may build a deal and start doing videos with the phone since it's that handy. Hope you guys enjoy it. Like I always say at the end of every video, take care of yourself and take care of your family. Because remember, at the end of the day, you and your family is all you got. EagleDustOff37 at gmail.com is my email address. If you guys have any questions, comment, click like. You know, I love feedback. You know, if you guys have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Like I said, there's always more than one way to do things. My way of doing things isn't necessarily the standard way, if you will. Just a different way of doing stuff. There's always more than one way to do things. Talk to you guys and gals later. Let's see if we can stop this.